do you believe we can have it all without some pain and sacrifice in it? Is that something you believe? Um, well, for, let, let's break that down because that's two different questions. So okay. do I believe we can have it all? Um, no, I know we can have it all because we are it all. Yeah. Um, and then the second part is, will there need to be pain and sacrifice? The answer is yes, because as a child, you actually learn the opposite. You learn to tap into and live from the energies of fear, which is correlated with the energies of force instead of the energies of love, which is more correlated with the energies of power, your own divine power and ability to create and manifest whatever you want in life. And so will there be pain and sacrifice? The answer is yes. The pain and the sacrifice will need to be literally the death of that old you and the birth of the new you. And that is, I believe, the human journey for us all. Are you a fan of uh, Dr. Hawkins' work in human consciousness? And oh, all that? my God. I was going to say, everything you said there is power versus force, truth versus falsehood, like his books, right? Yeah, but you know, funny story, man. Funny story. And, and this is, a lot of people don't believe me when I say this, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story. Please. Um, I, um, it was my, two years ago on my birthday. Three years ago on my birthday, on my birthday. And one of the things that I would do was I would host these massive mushroom ceremonies at my house back then because plant medicine changed my life, changed my life, ayahuasca, mushrooms, so forth and so on. And so on that store, on that, on that journey, I, I had an, a, a, an incredible experience. Um, you know, the normal dosage that a human being takes when they're with much sitting with mushrooms is three and a half grams. So I took my three and a half grams. There were like 20 of my friends. This is what I wanted to do for my birthday. I, to this day, I host an awaken every year on my birthday because my, my life is about helping other people. Right. And so in, in my own way, this is how I was doing that. Well, about the journey is about to end halfway through the journey. And, um, it was such an incredible journey that I go to the guy, it wasn't the shaman, it was the shaman's helper. And I said, hey, I want more, right? <laughs> and, 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 and this is a particular guy, by the way, this particular guy is one of the most famous guitarists on planet earth. I won't say his name, okay. um, but he's played <laughs> with Eric Clapton. He's played with, I mean, everybody, everybody. Yep. And he looks at me and he has another bag of three and a half grams and he gives it to me. And I, I didn't know, I didn't know the amount. I thought he was going to yeah. give me half a gram or something. So now brother, it I'm just doubled seven, up. I'm seven grams in. Yeah. I don't know if you know what that is, but that is, that is like, get ready. You're about to have an ego death. Yeah. So, so in that experience, what I started to see was I started to see my life as a puzzle a puzzle of emotions, a puzzle of thoughts, and a puzzle of feelings, all of them limiting. And it's as if it was like a, like a, like a matrix, like a jigsaw puzzle that one thought and feeling connected to another thought and feeling, right? And it was the dopest experience of my life, but the scariest experience of my life because I thought I was going to die. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I did die in very many ways. And so like, you know, like all of a sudden I would see and feel shame and then my body would start shaking, shaking. And I would start looking at all the places in which I had shame in my life, like shame around my belly, shame around who I really am. Right. And then I would rest for a little bit. I was like, oh, man, that was intense. Right. Guilt. All the places, you know, guilt about my divorce, guilt about, you know, not living with my children, you know, guilt about you know, whatever guilt. And then like, sure. it was like one after the other, after the other, after the other. And then the message that I got very clearly was that like, at the end of all of this, I was going to die. And I was going to basically come back as Neo from the matrix. True story. Yeah. It's actually wow. what happened. I'm saying my goodbyes to people and I'm telling everybody, people are like, what are you talking about? You're not, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to leave, but don't worry. I'll be back. And I'll be back a better me than ever, you know, whatever the case may be. Why am I bringing this up? It was the most profound experience of my life. And then like four months later, I attracted the book Letting Go by Dr. David mm -hmm. Hawkins. 
And when I'm reading the map of consciousness, I'm, I got cold because I'm like, oh, my God, that is what I experienced in the journey. So, so when I share what I share, it's not I don't share anything from like a mental perspective. I share from like I lived it. Mm-hmm. I lived it. I don't know. I don't know if I can ever truly articulate what it means and the difference between reading something and living it. And so that's what I'm. Yeah, man. Yeah, hundred percent. Isn't that why you feel like, uh, you know, we deal with a lot of sick people. So my background is, you know, my father was a doctor. My mother was a doctor in psychology. And, you know, we have a medical treatment with the center and we treat people from around the world, some of the sickest people. And a, a lot of them deal with those negative emotions, those lower consciousness levels. Sure. Until yeah. you address those, you can't truly heal, can you? No, man, no. <clears throat> so interesting that you brought that up. But what got me into all of this work was my mother's death. My mother died of cancer and, and she died of lung cancer at like 56. She was really, really young. And, you know, um, I, 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 you know, the doctors would tell me that, you know, you know, she has lung cancer, it had a metastasized, so forth and so on. And, and I, you know, back then I hadn't done any of this work yet. So I was like, this doesn't make sense. Like, how does a woman, a young woman get lung cancer? And she never smoked a cigarette in her life, in her life. How does this happen? And then the more and more that I started to realize the power of emotions, the more and more we started to realize you store grief in your lungs. Yes. Right. And so my mom's mom passed away when she was only 13 days old. So my mom's entire life was filled with grief, you know, mm-hmm. and, th- and this is where I started the work that I do because I started to realize how many people are getting sick. And I started to realize how many people are not living in their fullest potential. And I started to realize that human beings are walking around, not even understanding who it is that they truly are. And, and this is where I, in the discovery of who I am and in the discovery of my power, I thought, man, if, if I was living like this, how about the other 8.2 billion humans on the planet, you know? And, 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 and brother, once you see that, Casper, it's like, you can't unsee it. You can't, you can't, you can't. You, you can't sit still because you realize and you remember how you used to live your life and you realize there's just too many people out there that they're not making the money that they should be making. They're not living in the health that they should be living in. And they, they're not living in the relationship that she, they should be living in. And a hundred percent of it, brother, a hundred percent of it is connected to the thoughts, feelings, and emotions that they have become accustomed to living from because of their upbringing and their relationship with their parents. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really interesting to hear you talk about it because it sounds like a lot of like Dr. Hammer's work, New Germanic Medicine of connecting those emotions, grief, especially lungs, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it kind of shows that so much of disease starts on this level that we just don't address. And if we do in conventional medicine, we usually medicate that and just subdue it, but it's still there. You're not getting rid of the shame by taking a pill. You That's have to right. truly address it. 